Hey folks, today we are taking a look at the Zoids Deluxe figures that I own. Now, I only own a couple of these guys, so we're not going to be looking at a whole bunch. But what I do have, I hope you do enjoy. First up, what we have is Bear Fighter. Now, I don't remember seeing this guy much in the show, but he is pretty cool. He's a fun little kit, and I really like the coloring. The dark green and dark brown really work well for this guy. He's got several different weapons there up on his butt, and below his uh, chest there are weapons as well. Though, the figure itself is very compact. I was surprised by that when I took him out of the box and built him. He is a lot of fun. Though, I will admit, he has probably one of the weirdest gears of all of the Zoids I own. It takes forever to fully wind this guy up. And like a lot of my figures, he wants to turn a certain direction. This one wants to turn left. He does have a neat gimmick where you can actually stand him up like a grizzly bear, and he does walk around. Isn't that cute? The pilot is mounted in the head of the Zoid, like most Zoids. And you can also display the figure in either on all fours or standing up like this. I personally just flip him back and forth. I like both modes. Next up is Command Wolf. Now, this guy was used quite a bit in the show. I believe uh, Irvine, was that his name? I believe this is his primary unit for the beginning of the show. Now, the Command Wolf is one of the most versatilely used of Zoids of all time, I think, because it can fit a lot of different things on its back. Now, this figure does come with not only this giant cannon, but a smaller cannon that a little figure can fit in. Unfortunately, I don't like that one. I like this one. Spinning him up or winding him up, he's also tends to take a while to fully wind up, though he does have an issue where you wind it and it wants to move. The paint scheme on this guy is actually really nice. It's really sparkly, and I like that. It's not the matte finish that a lot of Zoids have. It's a much more sparkle finish. Again, Command Wolf is commanded from his head. Now, the only thing that you can pose on this guy is the actual back cannon, and it can pose in a couple of different ways. I've got one way just pointing off to the side here, but you can actually pose the cannons and point them in all different directions. Next is Hell de Gunner, the iguana type. One of the weirder things that uh, I have of my Zoids, he is the longest deluxe class. That tail is a good foot long. I mean, the figure itself is about 14 inches long with the tail fully extended straight back. And I, this one's a little weird. Those rubber hoses don't want to stay on, and the back looks like it's split open, and I have not been able to get it to close back up. Thankfully, this is one of the ones that doesn't really take a whole lot of turning to get him all spun up and ready to go. Though, for the amount of work that you do, he moves not that far. He really doesn't go that far. Though, I do like the pulsing cannon on his back. And this is one of the ones that has been repainted multiple times. There's a black one with green gold glowing highlights. And again, pilot in the head. And then there's also another spot for a pilot on the butt. Next up is Storm Swarder, or Sorter. Very interesting unit. It is apparently one of the fastest flyers in the Zoid's mythos. It's used a couple of different times throughout the ser different series, and it was actually used at, as a space flight unit in Universal Century, but the, those units were white. Unfortunately, I don't really care for the flying units or the uh, pterosaur-based units, because once you wind them up, they're not that interesting at all, really, unfortunately. You see, he just barely moves, and I have to push him in order to get him to move sometimes, especially on my uh, backdrop. But if you have it on a uh, very slick surface, he's not going anywhere. 
Though I think you could fix that with maybe just some little rubber pieces to plug onto his feet. And again, he's piloted from the head. Next up is War Shark, one of the more interesting units, one of the only aquatic Zoid units. Now, in the show, I think it was Universal Century, you actually saw this guy swimming in sand in the desert, which was pretty cool. But, hey, <laughs> it's liquidy-ish, right? Sadly, he is the most goofy looking when you do uh, get him wound up. Flipper, 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 flipper. Yeah, he, he really doesn't move, but I love the fact that his tail swishes back and forth. That, that is, alone is very, very cool. And actually, he's not really a shark. He looks more like a coelacanth. And, of course, Pilot is in the head, or the very front of the head, anyway. Last up, we are taking at a look at Zabat, or Zobat, as I've also heard. What's really cool with this figure is that he comes with his own stand that he can hang off of. That I really like. I just like the fact that you can store the figure on a stand. I, I appreciate that. Unfortunately, I don't think my figure works all that well because he's supposed to have wing flapping gimmick or a wing flapping gimmick with uh, this button on the back, this big red button, but it doesn't work so well. And I think it just, I think it just fell apart or stopped working. I'm going to have to fiddle around with it, take those pins out and see what I can do. His head, he comes with two heads. He comes with the bat head you see here, and you can replace that bat head with a mono cyclops head that I don't think the ears can plug into. Oh, and he also drops, well, his one gimmick is he drops these little car mine things that... Let it go. Whee! Whee! Yeah, it has a tendency to just spin out because the wheels don't spin. So I hope you enjoyed this look at my Deluxe Class Zoids. Next time we'll be taking a look at the Mega Class Zoids and then Death Sar. So, catch you guys next time.